our objective, since we have a system with the golden ratio showing up many times in it. Right. Yeah, there's at least one. There's, it's been a little while since we did this off the top of my head. There's an imaginary golden ratio. It has four roots, it turns out. It's a cubic equation. It had just the hyperbolic connection here. It has four roots. One over the imaginary golden ratio. Imaginary golden ratio squared. And one over the imaginary golden ratio squared. Okay, our objective is to understand what those properties really mean in a geometric way, in a picture you have in your head. All right, so the first thing is there's many ways to get to the golden ratio, algebraically or geometrically. Let's start with geometrically. So say you have a x-axis or a tabletop, and you have three sticks. They're straight and unit length, right? And so length of one, whatever your unit is. You take the first stick, and you put it perpendicular to your act to your tabletop, right? Stand it straight up. Its length is one and it's at 90 degrees. All right. <clears throat> at the center point of this one length stick, so one half up, we're going to attach the next one length stick right there and let it drop. Okay. So it attaches at the center and goes about like this. Now we take the third same length stick and attach it at the center of this one. Hang it over here and let it drop. It's another point. If we label the three points, A, B, and C, then the ratio from A to C, the length from A to C, divided by the length from A to B, equals the golden ratio. Okay, so it's constructible from three unit straight segments put in this arrangement. There's a half arrangement involved and so on, yeah? You start with a circle, okay? We're going to call whatever you, what size circle you pick, we're going to call its radius equal to 1 for our unit. Now, divide the circle with the diameter. So it has to go through the center point, but you can pick any diameter you want. Okay, so I'll pick like this. So we've cut the circle in half. Now, choose a side. I'll pick this side and put a square in there. And inflate it. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger, but it stays a square. So all of its sides stay the same as each other until you can't inflate it anymore, until you're trapped by the circle, no matter how you move. That's the biggest square you can put in there. Okay? So here, I'll try to draw the square like that. Now, it doesn't matter which direction you pick, but if I start from this side of the square and label A and B, and extend A and B till it hits the circle and call this point C. Then we have the exact same situation again. We have A or A C, this is the length from A to C, is what I mean by this, divided by the length from A to B equals the golden ratio. The cool thing is we're using unitary stuff, right? We're always using a unit circle or a unit six. So there's, a, there's some sort of actual structure in there. <laughs> slicing up uh, the conics, mm -hmm. utilizing the circles and everything mm -hmm. based upon where you uh, did the cut. Okay. Another place you can find the golden ratio is in a... Oh, I'm going to need to make that. Get good at that. One, two, three, four, five. Close enough. <laughs> okay, so pretend this was a drawn with all sides equal. <clears throat> okay, we have a pentagon. We're going to label the sides of the pentagon a length of one. We're going to make that our unit. Now, there's only one other, if you only care about the vertices and stuff like this, there's one natural unit of length in this shape. It's what we call the diagonal. It shows up here, or here, or here, right? Here. So it has a bunch of diagonals. All the diagonals have a unit, have a length of the golden ratio. Okay, pick any diagonal. If as long as the sides have a unit side of at length of one, then the diagonals are a length of the golden ratio. So it's built into that form, that geometric form. Hopefully this is why. That's the question that should be coming up. Why is that there, right? You have to be, get motivated to so investigate. 